Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm very glad being here with you all. And uh, I uh, present today part of my work for 20 years, <coughs> trying to see uh, what's going on in the uh, development of, of, of osteoarthritis. <laughs> since, as you all mentioned, this is a very important disease that affects millions of people and will affect more millions in the future. So we have to know what's going on since the beginning to the end of the process. The possibility we have when you use a model that we can know how it starts, how it develops, and how it ends. So we can find which are the mechanisms that we can stop since the beginning to make, uh, uh, to have biomarkers that could uh, detain the process. That's why uh, this is one of our work. We have a group of many students and uh, have a group of uh, very assi many assistants that are working in different fields, proteomics, genomics. But this one is the one that I will present today since it expressed the kinetics of the process related mainly to cytokines proteins. Okay. As you all know, I, I, it's only a memory. Uh, the site and severity of the arthritis depends on systemic factors and mechanical factors that increase the susceptibility damage, the fault repair, and osteoarthritis appears. This was published by Arden and Felsen years ago. We have always studied human osteoarthritis related to our model, normal model, normal human cartilage, normal osteoarthritis, I mean osteoarthritis in human and in the cartilage. We have always found the same alterations that we saw, have seen in, in human cartilage. And when we find something different in, in, the, in, in the rat cartilage, we try to look for in the human cartilage. Our work is not only in a laboratory. <clears throat> we have a much relationship with hospitals, and it's a multidisciplinary group that are, we are working in, in this field. Wow. Since the beginning, we started the morphology, microscopical studies, of the human cartilage, this is a normal cartilage, and most changes occurs in the superficial zone. The chondrocytes, that are main type of cells, and the only type of cells here, gathers together and change their structure, change their function and their activity. Well, the same thing we found in the rat model, normal model with these cells, chondrocytes, superficial zone, metal zone, and the formation of clusters with fibr fibrillation in the human and in the rat model. That's it, we started that way. Oh, shit. Oh. One of the things that uh, we were very much uh, surprised was that in human osteoarthritis, this was published in 96, 1996, we saw a great variability of cells. These cells were different from this one, were different from this one, and were, were different from this one. So we said, how can we determine which cells appears uh, uh, according to the process? And that's why in our model, we determined that in normal cells, this is the main uh, type of cells. Five days after induction, the cells try to round up. They try to contract they develop also the reticulum endoplasmic and Golgi apparatus, and then 20 days, they start to contract. At the end, they uh, explode. They uh, explode. This, the same thing happened with the extracellular matrix. In the normal, normal where with exercise, CHAM, that means, I'll explain that in a bit, in osteoarthritis. So we try to see, well, in normal cartilage, this is a normal staining of the uh, extracellular matrix. The exercise by itself doesn't produce any important changes. 
The sham is the, the experimental mother that we induce the incision of the article, but we don't take meniscectomy. We don't mix, uh, I mean, we don't take up the, mini, uh, the um, meniscus. We don't take up the meniscus. And in the Socrates, <coughs> our model is a meniscectomy sized uh, um, rat model in the uh, left, um, in the left uh, leg. And in this case also, we have lost of the uh, extracellular matrix. Knowing all this, the differentiation in, of structure, we published by, with Dr. Lavalle, a rheumatologist, because we work in relation with hospitals and Institute of Health and all that, a hypothesis that we call activation and transdifferentiation of chondrocytes phenotype. That's it. That means that the chondrocyte normally has his form, sir, synthetic activity, normal activity, but when there is an injury, there is a phase to try to repair that thing. Synthesizing molecules, repairing molecules. This was published by Stach and, and other authors. This, if this consists, and this is a change from this, from this, and from this, you can see the difference. You can see the difference. I mean, the chondrocytes try to synthesize things to repair the problem. This, if, the, if this continue, then we enter the, the degradative changes. The normal chondrocytes synthesize metalloproteinase and other cytokine and other type of uh, molecules like cytokines. And finally, when the uh, relationship between this um, chondrocytes and the matrix disappears, the homeostasis disappears, then they suicide themselves by a type of death that we call with Dr. Roach and Dr. Eigner in uh, 204, chondroptosis. And recently, one of my students in my uh, laboratory determined that this type of cell, that death, is a combination between the classical apoptosis and autophagy. This was published uh, recently, and uh, well, she graduated uh, last week. <laughs> She graduated last week, a very good student. <laughs> After that, Goldrin, <coughs> taking this idea, also presented and published the same hypothesis schematically. Well, DNA, I mean, uh, micro mechanical cardiac damage, tissue repairment that doesn't continue, and then matrix degradation, generation inflammation, chondrocytes, interleukin, cytokines, degradative phase, and chondroptosis, more damage to the cartilage. So that's a hip hypothesis we are working with. Normally, cytokines, mild violence, and uh, catabolic and anabolic violence is maintain the equilibrium. In OA, this goes f for the catabolic molecules. And that's what we are going to demonstrate experimentally. I know it takes a lot of rats takes a lot of rats, but if you see, it's exactly the same what we can see in human. And uh, well, we did uh, microscopical electron microscopy, we did uh, confocal microscopy, all type of microscopy, and also we did a statistical analysis from three groups. We take uh, three samples, three slides, and then three slides while well, we do all the uh, study for the uh, immunohistochemistry, and we show that how it changes different molecules. The catabolic molecule change increases importantly, interleukin-1 beta, importantly. And in the normal, it is trying to increase here, but at the end, when the, the, uh, is, uh, the osteoarthritis is established, it doesn't have much. That was in the uh, interleukin. 
this transforming growth factor that is the one that tries to counterbalance the catabolic wound. Well, tries to, it does try to counterbalance it, but at first it goes down. So it doesn't have this balance needed to maintain the homeostasis. Also happens in the leukemia then 10. You see, goes down, no order. And in the normal cartilage, no problem. I mean, exercise maintains the equilibrium. The problem is when it's a lesion, when it's destructed the, the meniscus, is that it produces this sort of thing. This was study of our first studies, uh, but afterwards we did the same thing with Western blood, also from the pool of rats, protein extraction, Western blood for interleukin, 10 alpha, alpha transforming growth factor, and interleucin 10, quantification by densitometry and statistical analysis <coughs> by ANOVA. And we also find the same thing. Here, we found that the most important catabolic enzy uh, enzyme is the uh, interleukin 1 beta. Look, it increases most importantly in normal with exercise, well, more or less nothing happens, but this is the most developed, as you can see here. And transforming growth factor, you can see how it goes up, and here is also a normal with exercise. But the most important thing is interleukin 1 beta. That's why we think and we have proposed that interleukin 1 beta is a marker, a biomarker of the initial part of the, the disease. We have a patent presented uh, saying that this is the initial part of this process. So if we can find in blood or in uh, cities, uh, in uh, orina, how do you say it? Urine. 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 <laughs> if you can find that the, since the beginning, that's a moment to start the treatment. The same thing, they have the transforming growth factor, and in sense, they pff, diminish. Diminished. At the end, diminished. So we got the conclusion that the most important is interleukin 1 beta which increases systematically, transform, uh, tenet necrosis factor also increases not as much as, uh, as interleukin 1 beta, and the two anabolic well maintains at the end, they are not enough. Uh, this is the most important. You see that they have a beta 1, they try to increase to balance, but at the end it diminishes and interleukin 10, well, doesn't increase. So this imbalance brings up the uh, destruction of the tissue. Our conclusion is, that our results suggest that during OA progression, chondrocytes undergo dramatic phenotype changes, displaying a signally transductional machinery capable of inducing its own morphofunctional changes. In early OA, chondrocytes increase endoplasmic reticulum Golgi in order to synthesize proteins synthesized, uh, required for the extracellular matrix reparation. However, when the reposition cap capacity is overwhelmed, chondrocytes begin to synthesize catabolic molecules like interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6, interleukin alpha, alpha, that stimulates the inflammatory process and the gravity process of the extracellular matrix by metalloparas amyloperitin. Furthermore, the decrease of the antiparamacolumica molecules in one could be involved at the beginning of the disease. Finally, when chondrocytes lose their reparasite capacity, it executes its own death programs. It includes the autophagy and apoptosis, mm -hmm. which we call it chondroptosis. This, that I said, now we are doing proteomics. Not only this enzyme, <coughs> this enzymes, we're trying, we have found 20, about 20 new proteins that appear since the beginning. So those could be biomarkers mm -hmm. for the early diagnosis of the disease. That's the most important thing, I think. 
two most important I said in Sanofi in to, uh, last month, prevention and early diagnosis. That's the most important two things that we have to do related to the osteoarthritis. And this is a thesis of uh, one of our students that will graduate uh, next month. I would like to mention all this activity of, of my group that we have, that have obtain all these results, all the students, uh, as well, doctor in science and, and master in science. We work with this, this different institutes. Our assistants, Magdalena, Raimundo, Sirene, Clara, and other collaborations. So this work is not done by my group only. It's a collaboration of a group that have medical doctors, biologists, molecular biologists, physical uh, professionals, and all that. This uh, will be, uh, was sent to be published, this paper uh, was sent last week. So uh, we hope it will approve it. It will be uh, in uh, the uh, journal that is called uh, Molecular and Experimental Pathology. This was sent last week and we hope to be published. So thank you very much. Any Excellent. Thank you very much, Dr. Flores, for that in-depth discussion on cytokines expression. Any questions? Congratulations. It's a wonderful study. We have done very similar study, but use a different, mo different model. We use the extracorporeal shock way perform in the uh, surgical induced osteoarthritis model in the rat. And our findings are pretty similar to what you have, but when you use different kind of molecular, uh, uh, what you call cytokine, we use the DKK1, MMP13, beta-catenin, as well as BMP2. And we use a similar thing, but their reaction are almost basically is an inflammatory process followed by the apoptosis. Now the question is, uh, this molecular change, does not necessarily mean gene expression changes. So I think there's some confusion. Sometimes it mix up with what you're looking for. The important thing is that when I'm looking for right now, when I'm looking for an abnormal protein, could be something can discover through the development or during the course of treatment in osteoarthritis the knee joint, this is in the rod. If that's the case, then you can find from proteomic standpoint of view, you can identify the abnormal protein. That could be what the key factor is for the cause of development of osteoarthritis change. Thank you. Yes, thank you for observation. But uh, we, we, we are finding all the morphology, how it changes, all the structure of the tissue, all the, the activity of the cells according to the period of the induction of osteoarthritis. And well, there should be other models that could, molecules that be trying to repair those things. But the things we see is the destruction of the cartilage during this period of induction of the osteoarthritis. Any other questions? Yeah, at the back. Hi, Dr. Flores. Um, I work for a company, Sobi, and we market Kinneret, which is an IL-1 beta antagonist, Anakinra. And uh, it's indicated for rheumatoid arthritis, and it's used by the medical community in a whole litany of IL-1 beta-driven diseases. Um, now, what the medical community has done independently is there's some case reports and publications about intra-articular injections of anakinra um, post-surgery, et cetera. So my question to you is, do you think inhibition of IL-1 beta could be a disease-modifying approach to osteoarthritis? Sure. Well, <clears throat> we are, uh, we're finished in, in vitro with the experiment. Uh, we put the cartilage, we put intercin in the beta, and it destroys. We put this and block the inner beta, nothing happens. And now we have a collaboration with a enterprise with a factory or some other company enterprise well, <laughs> that uh, start doing this in vivo, in the, in the model. And uh, well, in vitro, it, it works. Now we have to see if, if, if in the model it also works. 
But, it, it, but if it works in the model, then probably we have to look, and this is a collaboration we have uh, with our enterprise, to have phase one of uh, study in patients. But this will take time because we have to see the secondary effects of all this. But in vitro, it works, and this is the stage we are now. <laughs>